This is a video tutorial on zip forms. The website address that you need to go to for zip forms is www.zipformplus.com. Not with the S. So zipform no s plus.com. And by now you should have your login and your password. If you don't have your login and your password, you may need to contact the Hawaii Association of Realtors or Zip Forms Customer Service. Uh, we might also have a login and password special for you because of our elite forms that are in our Zip Forms program. So you may need to ask <clears throat> someone like Paul or Karen how to get that special login and password. Okay, so once you have that login and password, you're going to log in. And this will take you to the Zip Forms main menu. Now, when we get to the main menu on my computer, you're going to see a bunch of transactions. And if you're using Zip Forms for the first time, you're not going to see all of this, obviously, because these are uh, transactions that I actually created and are in my Zip Form program. But it will still look very similar, but this down part over here may be blank. So I'm going to show you how to add a transaction how to add forms to your transaction, how to email, and how to save to your hard drive. So that's pretty much what we're going to cover today in this class. So again, if you are getting into your zip form for the first time, you are going to want to add a new document. So see the toolbar up here, you've got forms, new, delete, import, clauses. I'm going to go over some of these. Uh, the major one is obviously is the forms. If you were to click on this button, that will just take you to the forms. Uh, you could theoretically set up a transaction by doing it this way, but I'd rather that I show you how to do it a different way. But if you wanted to just go in here and see what a form looks like, this is the place to go. Uh, when you get here, you're going to see on the right hand side, you're going to see um, a list of forms. And if you look up here where it says select library, and you click this little down arrow here, you're going to see three different libraries. The first one is the Hawaii Association of Realtors Standard Forms. This would include things like your purchase contract, all of your standard addendums, your exclusive right to sell, listing agreement, seller's disclosure, that type of thing. This next one here, Elite Pacific Properties, you're going to see all of the addendums that Elite Pacific Properties has done on their own letterhead uh, and that are not part of the Hawaii Association of Realtor Standard Forms. Uh, and then you have the third one here, the Honolulu Board of Realtors, which are things like the uh, MLS profile sheet, the MLS change form, things to fill in uh, for your uh, MLS database. So if we were to go into Hawaii Association of Realtors and we were to scroll through, you will see all of the different documents here. And you would scroll maybe to look at the purchase contract. You can click on it right from here. Once you click on it, it will open it up into this white window right here. It's supposed to, but maybe for whatever reason, it just put it into your forms. So you can uh, click on it, and then what it does also, oh, there it goes, it just popped in there. Um, it will also be populated onto another toolbar over here called My Forms. So if you double click on it, it will open up, and then it will also put it in here. So if you were to go to a different document, let's say you wanted to put in the As is Addendum, you could also double click on that it would pop open here in the middle and then also add it to your list over here. Now you've got to, and then these little arrows here, you know, open and close these, these, uh, um, columns. So if I wanted to get rid of this column, I would just hit that little arrow there and then it would suppress. And same thing with this over here. I will click the arrow and it will move it over that way. Now let's say I want to go back to, I've got my as is addendum, I want to go back to my purchase contract. I would just click on purchase contract and it would take me back there. Now you probably could start a transaction right from here, but I like to show you a different way because it's a lot more uh, organized. Uh, but this is a good way to just kind of, if you wanted to quickly have a look at something, uh, just to kind of see what the language is so you don't have to go into one of your prior transactions, you can just go straight from here. 
So going back to this list here, this again is of course is the Hawaii Association of Realtors standard form forms. And then if we click on elite, oops, we click on elite, we're going to see all of the elite Pacific properties standard forms. So one of the ones that we like to use on our contracts is called the elite Pacific property standard addendum. So you stick that in there and this would be the elite addendum that you would use. Okay, this third library is the Honolulu Board of Realtors Library of Forms. And what this is, is when you are filling out a listing agreement and you're going on for a listing presentation, you need to pull up the MLS sheet, which we'll cover in a listing presentation uh, video tutorial. Uh, this would be the MLS information form, the form that you would fill out for the office so that they can enter your listing into the MLS. So we've got the high central property type single family and there's one for condo, vacant land, etc. Uh, so this is where you would get those forms and they just put in the brand new form so I'm happy to see that they did that. So you've got a listing change forms if you wanted to make a change to an MLS price, uh, listing price, or you're going to change the date or anything to do with the MLS, uh, you would do your change form here. So those are the three libraries. So I want to make sure that it's clear on what these libraries do and where you can find the forms. Okay, now that we know where to get our forms, we're going to go back to the beginning and it, we have this other toolbar up here, which is transactions, templates, contacts, obviously if you need some help, and feedback if you want to give feedback. But the two that we're really going to be working with here are transactions and templates. So let's go back to transactions. And I'm not going to save that because it was just a tutorial there. <clears throat> so we're going back to our main screen. Now we're going to the next button over, which is new. We're going to create a new transaction. So let's say, for example, you have a buyer who wants to buy something and you want to set up a purchase contract fill it out and send it to review at elitepacific.com and follow the uh, off offer procedures. So here we are, we've clicked on new new transaction and we need to name it. So you see over here we have all the names here, uh, transaction name, this is what it's going to appear like. So however you like to do your organization, whether you want to do it by buyer name or seller name, I like to do it by the address because a lot of times I forget names and I'm much. it's much easier for me to remember addresses, I don't know why, but it's all always up to you how you want to do your organization. There's no uh, rhyme or reason to doing this, it's just whatever you feel better with naming your transaction. So let's say I have a I have a property that I want to uh, do a purchase contract for. I'm going to put in the address and we'll put in the one that we've done on other videos that I've done. Oops. New wiki circle. And you don't have to put the whole name, just pretty much something that would be easily searchable. So whatever you put here can be searched. So if you did put a seller name in here or a buyer name, you can search by that name if you if you had several transactions you were doing and you, you actually needed to do a search, which would be a good problem to have, obviously. Uh, this would be something that would be searchable. Now, this is going to be a purchase. So I want to click on purchase because if you did happen to have a lot of listings and a lot of a lot of uh, purchase purchase contracts uh, you might need to go back and do a search on all your purchase contracts maybe you forgot the address and maybe you forgot the the name of the clients it was so long ago uh, if you wanted to do a, a search on just your purchases this is a searchable field as well as well as this box here, residential, commercial, if you wanted to do a search just on all your single family transactions, you can click that. Or sorry, you can search on residential and then these things as well. Now, <clears throat> apply template. We're going to cover this a little bit later when I show you how to create a template, but if you had one in your in here, you could click it here to use it, but I'll show you that in a little bit. We're just going to do a simple setting up of a uh, purchase contract and we're going to do a simple setup of a transaction is really what I'm trying to do here. Okay, you could add a picture here. I don't really do that, but if you wanted to get savvy about it, you could put in a picture. So now that I've got my name of my transaction, I've, tra I've clicked the transaction type. 
the property type, I'm ready to save it. So hit save. And now what that does is it brings up a blank screen here, just like I showed you when we were in forums. And then we want to go to the select library. And we're going to choose first the Elite Pacific Properties Library of Forms because we need to choose here the Offer Procedures documents. I'm going to scroll through here. Purchase Offer Procedures. So I clicked on that and that's going to set it up here in my list. Then I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to go to the Hawaii Association of Realtors Standard Forms and in order I'm going to choose the forms I want to use. So the first one I want to pick is the purchase contract and then I'm going to think about what addendums I want to use and the first one I might use is the as-is addendum <clears throat> and then I'm going to find the lead-based paint disclosure addendum and then I'm going to choose a cooperating broker agreement so now that I've set up all of my documents with regard to uh, the Hawaii Association of Realtors standard forms I now need to add in the Elite Pacific Properties standard addendum so just go back to Elite Pacific Properties choose that addendum and I'm all set up so now that I have my list of forms here, now I can start working on adding in the information. So I start off with the first one, Purchase Offer Procedures. <clears throat> and as you go through this, should open up here. This is uh, your kind of like your checklist of what needs to be done with regard to filling out your filling out your contract. So you want to go through this first and fill out all of the boxes. And notice how we have the orange line here. This means that it's a fillable line. So you would put in your buyer's name, your buyer's number, and etc. And then just fill it out to the best of your ability. <clears throat> and then to toggle back to where you were, you can either hit the back button or you can go to your forms and simply go on to the next document. Now, most of the fields in here are, are uh, they populate to other parts of the contract. So let's say, for example, you put in a buyer's name, it should populate to all of the lines that where a buyer's name would need to be entered. So starting off with your purchase contract you have this fillable field here you notice that you have a little down arrow when you click in the box if you click that down arrow it will show you all of the uh, other times that you ever filled this box in it will save it if ever you need to re refill it without having to type it back in again so you see how I've typed Karen Mayer's name several times and I misspelled it one time I don't know how to get it out of there but <clears throat> Uh, I would just simply choose Karen Mayer and pop it right in there. That way I don't have to type it. The same thing with brokerage firm. You just simply click the down arrow and then choose whatever you had in there before. Now you're probably going to notice that the first time that you do this that you'll not have anything in there. So you'll have to do a contract or two in order for those items to uh, be saved in those fields. Uh, if you arrow over it like I just did it should give you a little pop-up window that tells you what to put into that box so that's kind of helpful if you weren't really sure what to put it what to put into that field if you arrow over it you'll see that little box pop up so I'm over a reference date here and it says enter purchase agreement date full date and you will notice too when you are in a box that uh, you are to put in a date it will bring up a calendar so if you put in um, a reference date of today's date you'll notice that it's April 26th that's today's date it will be highlighted for you so if you weren't sure and you forgot what the date was this kind of helps you you just click on it and it will populate the entire address into that line if you are just going to be typing in information you would just simply type it in Put 
the city and the date. Again, if you've typed in a city before, it will have it here. State. And if it's faster for you just to type it in, then just type it in. Whatever. It's not 96734, but you get it. You can scroll down and find the right one if you wanted to. So 96825 is Honolulu. And then uh, if you have a condominium, I always like to go on the second line and type in the date, uh, sorry, type in the uh, name of the condominium. So you could type in, uh, let's just say this is a uh, new beach, but if this was a condo, this is how you would do it. And it would just be another line or you could, you, you couldn't add it to this line because it's already set up for you. Uh, so that's why this is sort of like a, one of those fillable additional lines if you wanted to put in more information. And then the tax map key you would just simply fill in the information. And, and now you would just come on down to the rest of your contract. Most of the boxes are pretty uh, self-explanatory. You would just put in the information. Uh, some of the boxes are clickable for X's. So if you choose this one and then you meant to choose this one, this box will go away. Um, some boxes are set up that if you choose it and there are other, and I'm going to go on to the next page to show you that. Uh, anyway, so going down here, you can actually date your contract. So let's say you want to go ahead and date this for the buyer. You can go ahead and date it here. I would recommend doing that because when you go into zip forms, sorry, not zip forms, but DocuSign, you will notice that you have to click and drag a date over. And if you already date it here, that'll save you a lot of time when you get to DocuSign. Okay, so another area that I wanted to talk to you about is, uh, okay, let's talk about this first. See how you have agenda here and you want to check all that apply. If you click in the box, it doesn't do anything. So remember how we had on the first page and we put put the check in the box? It was already it was already uh, coded to put in an X there. So if you click on it, the X automatically appears. You don't have to type the X. Well, these are boxes that are not done that way. You actually have to put something in the box. And that's actually pretty smart because you don't want to put an X in for everything. Uh, you might want to put like an NA or something like that. So if 1031 exchange here did not apply, you could just put in uh, NA and then agreement of sale NA. Oops. NA. And you might see this little icon here pop up. I'm going to show you that in a second, but that's for the clause editor. So now what I want to do is now I want to put a check in here. So now I actually physically put the X in the box. And you want to try to fill out all of the boxes so that there's no uh, question about whether or not you meant to put something there or not put something there. So if it doesn't apply, I would put NA, and if it applies, then you would put the check. And over here again, if you put the check in here, you're going to want to do that and then put in Elite Pacific Properties. And again, if you have done it before, you'll have a list of all of your handwritten addendums. So if you've gone in here before and written in some other addendum uh, manually, it will save in here and you could just click it and not have to retype it in, which is kind of cool. Okay, another thing that's kind of cool about zip forms is that if you have a field that is set up for a calendar date or a dollar amount or something like that where it's already, the, the field has already been coded to put in a date or to put in a uh, dollar amount, you could bypass that by simply hitting the space bar. If you hit the space bar, the section will turn kind of a greenish blue and then it becomes a text box. So now you can actually physically write something in here. So this would be a good area to put in like what we would normally put here would be three oops, business days from J1 or something. But you can type in just about anything you want here as long as it fits in the field. So that's a, a good thing that you can do. Okay, and now I'm going to show you how to utilize the clause editor. And let's say, for example, we're on our description in the purchase contract and you have a description you need to put a description here and you're not really sure what to write or what 
you, you don't know the language to put in here. What do people normally do? Well, we have a, a, a list of clauses that you can uh, add to your zip form. And if you don't already have it, there's another video tutorial on how to add uh, clauses to your clause editor. Um, but let's say, for example, you didn't know what to write here, you've never done it before, and you want to know what the standard language is to put here. Then you would simply click in the field, and then you would click on that pencil, which will open up the clause editor. Or Sorry, it, click the pencil, and then it, this will pop up. You're going to click the plus sign, and that will open up the clause editor. and it would look a little something like this. And you see where it says category? All of the different types of categories you can click on to find out what language there might be for that particular category. So we're going to be looking for description of property. And you click on that category. And then do you see where it says title? You're going to click the down arrow. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six potential uh, descriptions that have been written for this particular category. So obviously we don't want apartment building because we're doing a single family home. So we just scroll down to single family and that would show you the clause. Now that you have the clause and you have the right information, you're going to hit the insert button. Once you've hit the insert button, it will populate that entire clause into the line where you have selected to put it. But notice how it doesn't have some information. It's just a standard clause that has been written for you to just populate in here. So obviously if there's a standard clause that everyone has, we don't want to put in specifics. We want to leave some areas blank for you to automatically fill in. So I just want to point that out to you that although it's there for you to use, remember that there are certain, there are parts of this that need to be filled in. So if you had a three bedroom, you would insert three in here. And then let's say you had um, two baths, so three bedrooms, two baths, with approximately how many square feet of land. You would look at your MLS sheet and type in, you know, the square feet of land. And you can actually delete, add, do whatever you want. But the main thing was that you were able to populate something in here with language that you would never have known how to write it or uh, what is normally said in contracts, and this will help you. Uh, I've done this so many times that I, I could just pretty much write it myself without even having to, to do the clause editor, but it is a lot faster to just kind of click, 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 and then pop. And then all you got to do is put in a few little uh, bits of detail here. Okay, so having done that, now we are going to go to another section of the contract. Okay, so here we are on page 13 of the contract. And although I added the buyer's name uh, in the offer procedures document, it didn't populate. So even though maybe there might be some places where you would think it would populate, just be double check your information when you are going through this that you did fill out everything. But if I were to put in the buyer's name here, this is a... Uh, this is this section right here is a main section that sort of drives the rest of the contract. So if you did put a buyer's name here, it should definitely auto populate to other parts of the form. So I'm going to put it in here, Bob Buyer, as an example, and I'm going to put in my name here, and I'll just put like myself for now. Oops. One four zero one, and my email. Okay, so now when we go over to a different document, like the as is, let's say, once I go there, you'll notice that we have Bob Buyer should have populated to the buyer line on the as is. So, and, and also we didn't go into the as is and you can see here that the date populated, the address populated, and the TMK. So we don't have to retype any of this information, which is nice about zip forms that it does do that. Uh, and then you see Bob Buyer has definitely populated over here. Now I want to stop here just to kind of explain a little bit about saving. Uh, you need to remember that you're on the internet 
and that anytime you're doing anything on the internet that you want to make sure that you save your information because if for some reason your your computer crashed you would lose all your data you don't want that to happen so every time like maybe five minutes into it that you've done any kind of typing in here you want to hit the save button so just simply hit the save button I oh, didn't do it because I was I had already saved. Once you go from one document to another, it will auto save for you. But the purchase contract is so long that you could be on page six or seven and having added so much stuff that all of a sudden your computer crashes or something happens where the power goes out and then you go back into your document and then the adding of the transaction should have took but anything that you may have added in your purchase contract might be gone so you want to consistently hit the save button so I'm going to show you what that looks like here so um, we'll just put none this and maybe we'll put in a date just so we have something to do here okay so now see how the it was grayed out before and now it's darker I'm gonna hit that button and it's gonna save and if I were to add more information here it's gonna be blue again but this time if I were to go back to my forms and go back to the purchase offer procedure see how it says saving changes that would automatically save things for you because zip forms recognizes that you're moving from one form to another it wants to make sure that it auto saves for you but like I said if you're in the purchase contract and you are all the way on page like you know 10 or 13 or whatever you're gonna notice that uh, if for you're not gonna notice it but you're going to want to save something because if you're that far along and you haven't saved it and something happens you could lose all your data and then you'll be kicking yourself so just wanted to make sure that you understand that we are on the internet here and that anything can happen while you're on the internet with your computer crashing and or even with the uh, server for zip forms it could possibly go down in the middle of your working so consistently hit the save button okay now that we've saved it and we're finished uh, obviously we're not going to do the whole purchase contract here because I have another class for that but um, this is really just simply how to use it forms uh, how to build a transaction how to save and all that so now that we've built our transaction we've got all of our documents here and if we've theoretically filled everything out and now we're technically ready to send this to review at elitepacific.com then we need to get this saved to our hard drive so to save it to your hard drive you're going to go to save as PDF okay so it's important to know that once you get to this screen that you see these boxes here whatever box that you decide to click is going to be saved so we want to start off with purchase offer procedures another thing too is that when you click it it's going to save an order in the way that you click it now you can save it one document at a time or you could save it all as one document so I like to put everything all into one document so that it's easier to send and uh, going back and forth between people uh, because if you don't do that it'll put it into separate files and you'll have to you'll have to attach them in an email separately so I put it in the order in the way that I want it to uh, go into one file document I always like to have the cooperating broker go last so I'm going to click this one first and then this one and then it will save it in that order so down over here you'll see how it says documents to save I've got my my order here now see how it says here save selected as separate PDFs I don't want that I want save selected as single PDF that way all of this will be one PDF document okay and now what I want to do is I want to save to computer so I click save to computer and that should bring up your uh, window damn it I hate that what the hell okay so once you hit save it will either if you're on a, per a PC it will probably open up a uh, your window to save to your hard drive some sort of a, um, a window will pop up for you to save to your uh, desktop or to to a file folder that you have saved in your uh, your Explorer program 
<clears throat> I'm on a Mac, so it's actually going to open it up in a PDF, and then I have to save it from here. So now that it's opened up like this, I just hit File, Save, and then I'm going to save that to my desktop. And I'm going to put maybe make make maybe rename it because zip forms kinds of give it its own name. Uh, you might want to go ahead and rename it something that is more familiar to you. So I always put in like offer and then the address so I can find this easy in the folder wherever I saved it. Okay, so now that I've saved that, it's now no longer on the internet. It's no longer on my hard, it's no longer on the internet in zip forms. It's still in zip forms, but I've saved it to my hard drive. So now I have two copies. I've got the copy on zip forms and I've got the copy on my desktop. So now I can actually email this to review at elitepacific.com directly from my hard drive. Now you can email directly from zip forms, which I'm going to show you how to do now. Uh, but it's a good practice to save it to your hard drive just in case you need to send it again and maybe you can't get into zip forms. So I wanted to show you how to save it to your hard drive. But if you had done all of this and you're ready to send it now to review at elitepacific.com, you can do that directly from zip forms. And uh, how you would do that is you would hit the send button. And that would open up a uh, email window here and you would fill in the recipient information which would be review at elitepacific.com but for today for our class I'm going to put in liana at elitepacific.com and my subject would be new offer 69 new wiki and then you might if you wanted to copy yourself you could check this box and then of course if you were going to do any sort of attachments uh, you you could do that here, I suppose, but I've never done this before. So, um, and you're, again, it's asking you, remember when we were setting it up to save to our hard drive and it asked us if we wanted to set it, set it up as a separate PDF or single PDF. It, now that you've chosen to send it somewhere, it's asking you that again. So do you want to choose a single PDF? And now you can write a message to whoever's doing your, your contract review. So let's say, uh, you wanted to address something to Scott or Karen, whoever who is doing it, and you want to maybe explain something. Maybe there is something in your contract that needs explaining, like, uh, uh, just want to note that this is a uh, very important, or say something to the fact that that this is time sensitive and critical that I get in ASAP as there is another offer coming. Something like that. This would be where you would put your message and then you would just sign it, you know, Leanna, something like that. Now that you set all of that up and you're ready to send it, you would just simply hit the send button. Oh. My bad. Um, so again, you need to ch check off the documents that you want. But that's nice that it tells you to do that. And I'm glad that it happened during the class so that if this did happen to you, now I can explain what you're supposed to be doing. So if it does pop up to you, uh, I, I didn't check off anything to save. So obviously it's giving me an error message here saying, please select at least one document. And I did forget to make the checks here. So we're going to do it again in the order that we want it to be set up. And those documents are all over here. And now I should be able to send it with no problem. This document has been successfully sent. Okay, so then now all you have to do is wait for review to email you back with whatever changes that you need to you need to make. And then I'm going to show you too how to uh, log off. And let's say, for example, you want to get back in and find that find that document. So let's say, for example, you've been out and about. Now you want to go back into to zip forms to find that document so that you can make some corrections. So you would go to your your website or your your Internet Explorer or whatever browser that you use. And I'm going to go to zip forms. Log back in.
just logging in. Sorry, it takes so long. So here we are back. And now that you were back in here, you'll see that the last transaction that you worked on shows up at the top of the list. So if you had three or four other uh, documents in here, the last one will go back up to the top. So if I were to go into this transaction and do something and come back in, uh, it would then be now at the top of the list. So that's kind of nice that it's the last transaction you're working on shows up right here. Okay, so I want to show you a couple things of what you can do here after you have created a transaction. You've got the line here. I've actually gone in and brought up my sample purchase contract because we're going to do something with this. We're going to save it as a template, but before I do that, I want to show you a couple of other uh, quick things. So you have your list of all your transactions here. You can actually go to the right here and click on this down arrow and this will give you some options of what you want to do with that specific transaction. You can either open it from here, uh, you can also double click on it. Uh, you can open up and view the details which will allow you to uh, change the name of your transaction if you wanted to go back in and revise that. Uh, you could from here save it as a template and I'll talk about that in a minute and um, so so that's just like a pop-up window where you can actually work on this transaction right from this line otherwise you can of course double click on it which would take you into the transaction but now you've gone into another window uh, but from this window you can still utilize those features in that pop-up window so see where I said buyers bought buyer sample there was the little down arrow here that will open up that window of menu options. So there's a lot of things that you can do here. I'm not going to cover everything because you may not even use half of this stuff, but uh, like for example, you have save as a template, you can copy it, uh, you can send, uh, you can email, <clears throat> all that sort of thing right from here. And that's a good uh, tool to use. Over here says transaction status. So let's say, for example, you have closed on the transaction and you want to give it a, um, you know, give it a category or a code that it is now inactive or it is closed. That way, it's again something that can be searched on uh, with all your closed files. You can bring everything up together. So that's that. And then what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to create a template. Okay, there are two ways that you can do a template or create a template and I'm going to show you the simplest one here first. Uh, we've got a purchase contract that we've done in the past that pretty much everything in that purchase contract is relatively standard and to make it easy for myself to create this template I'm just going to use an old one and kind of uh, tweak it up a little bit so that I can save it as a template for, for future purchase contracts. So here I have a purchase contract that I've done before and I've got my transaction all built right here. So I've got the purchase contract, cooperating broker, standard addendum, as is, and the purchase offer procedures. So now what I want to do is, I'm, because I'm working with an old uh, transaction, I'm in that transaction right now. So I could do one of two things. I can either just start going ahead and going in here and, um, you know, uh, taking out information like, Obviously, if I'm going to use this template, I want this to be blank, so I would take out the street information. Oops. But I want to leave Honolulu, Hawaii, because I probably will... Oops, that didn't fill in. Uh, don't know why it's not staying on here, but anyway. Uh, the city and state would stay the same, and maybe you might want to delete out the, the, the zip code. And you would just simply go through the whole contract and you would kind of tweak it so that it's sort of blank because you don't want this old TNK number to be in there. What you're really looking to do is to make sure that things like buyer representation is always going to be Elite Pacific Properties, so you definitely would leave that. If you're going to be using a template for something in the future, you don't know who the company that's representing the seller is going to be, so that would probably always stay blank. And you wouldn't want to date it, so you could take that out. And things like, you know, what are your standard initial deposit going to be? If it's always 5000 then maybe leave it 5000 If it's always going to be an uncashed check in your mind, you can just leave all this here. And then if it is different, you can always change it. Your information should always go here. So that could be something that you can have in your template that uh, it never changes. So uh, that would be a good thing to fill out. If you always use the as is and the lead paint, those things could be checked automatically. And you can put NA in all the other boxes so that you don't have to do it every time. You can't really fill this in because it'll be 
um, specific to the contract that you're writing, but you could uh, put in here the three business days from acceptance of J1 for the additional deposit. That could always stay there. Um, you can always leave the language in here for the mortgage. That's helpful. If you're always doing a, if you're going to be saving this as a single family uh, template, then you could leave in the single family language here. Uh, things to put in all the time would be maybe the escrow officer that you like to use, that sort of thing. So pretty much you just want to make it really standard so that all you got to do is come in here and fill out the blanks. So if you're always checking off the same box and you're always putting in the same uh, language in the line, then go ahead and fill this all out to, to be the way that you normally do it. And then of course if you do have a situation that's different then you would just delete it and re rewrite in the new stuff. But this will save you a lot of time if you do this. Now although I'm in here this transaction, I would recommend that before you start tweaking around with things like this to go ahead and save it as a transaction which we haven't quite done yet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back and see how it's saving the changes so sort of kind of messed up that transaction. I don't want to mess up the original transaction that I worked on before. So as soon as you get in here and you see that you have all your documents here, you can just go right up here and do a save as template and then here's where you would name it. Single family resident uh, purchase contract contract sample or template. You don't have to say template, but it might help because if you're not sure what you named it, that might be helpful. And then, of course, you'd have to redo that uh, coding here with the template type and the property type. And then you would just simply hit save. And then I'm going to show you how to implement using the template now. So now you've uh, saved the template. Now you want to go back to the template to start to do your edits. So you would hit templates. And then Yours will probably all be blank based except for that one that you saved. So you would go into the one that you've you've uh, created and just click on that. And now you're opening the template. You're no longer in the original purchase contract that you had with Bob Buyer. Now you've got a, a template that's all ready to start working on. So you would go into your purchase contract and then you would start to go through that process of, you know, adding in new stuff, deleting stuff out to make it your perfect clean template probably should have did that first but anyway okay so now that we've did a template that way then the other way would be to simply start a new template uh, and, and you would build one from scratch so you would click on templates and just like you would do if you were doing a new transaction you would hit the new button and then you would give your template a name and we'll give this one a single family resident purchase contract new say it like that so we can keep it separate from the other one and then I'm going to do a purchase and then residential and then I'm going to save it so now I've created a new template now what I want to do is I want to build my template so let's say for example you've got a purchase contract you're gonna click that you're gonna do the as is addendum and you're going to choose your uh, cooperating broker agreement and then you're going to go choose the elite addendum and now you've built a, a template for the single family single family home then you would go into your transaction and now it's all blank so you kind of see how I was going with that with the Bob Buyer old transaction. You wouldn't have to retype anything even with that. So it's like you're copying a transaction and doing like a save as and just re, um, redoing some of the information within it. But if you want to start from scratch, that's fine too. And you would just simply go through the whole purchase contract like you would if you were filling it out and just start adding in all the all the standard details. Like you'd always put Karen, you would always put Elite Pacific Properties. All of this stuff would stay within this template and would never change and then it would save you a lot of time. So that's how to save templates. Now how to implement using the template. So let's go back to transactions. I will say yes to that. And uh, let's say we want to utilize that. So let's say we have a brand new buyer and we'll call this one Barbara Buyer and she's doing a purchase 
residential. And now I want to use my single family homes purchase contract template for this particular transaction. So I would hit my apply template, go in here and I would look for my Bob Buyer sample purchase contract. This is the one that's already pre-filled out. And then there was that other one that was blank that we would have filled out too. So you just find the template that you want to use and then you would hit save. And then all of those forms are automatically populated now into this purchase contract for Barbara. So if we go to purchase contract, you'll notice that it's all filled out just like we did when we when we uh, created our, uh, did the template and now we want to go in and make this uh, specific to Barbara's purchase so it wouldn't this would probably be blank so you would just change it to Barbara's purchase whatever the, the property address would be and you would just simply go through this and fill it out according to Barbara's purchase and then you would save and do everything else like you would normally do and now it's no longer a template it's an actual transaction so I hope that explains how to utilize the template function almost done here I just want to show you now how you can delete things from zip forms it's very simple so let's say I just want to get rid of this transaction altogether all you have to do is go to this little down arrow here and then you would delete and then it asks you are you sure you want to delete which is always good and then you would delete if you still wanted to delete that again if you wanted to delete templates because maybe you had just too many going on in here you can go in here and uh, also delete your templates. Okay just a couple of other things here to show you before we end here. I wanted to show you how to do a search. So if you had a lot of transactions in your zip forms and you didn't want to scroll through everything uh, or maybe you couldn't read something very clearly then maybe just putting in something here to help you find it would be helpful. So let's say I, I have a a seller name uh, and I want to go through all of my zip forms to find all of the transactions that I've done for that seller. So I'll put in a name here. So I put in Dragons Group which is a client and after putting in that information it's going to pull up all of my transactions that match that particular name. So whether it was a buyer or a seller it's going to pop up. Let's see I want to do a search for a property address so I'll put in If I do that, then it will bring up whatever pretty much matches whatever I put in this box. And if I wanted to sort, let's say I wanted to sort all my transactions, I could do so by clicking the sort button and I could do it by buyer name. So it didn't work there, sorry. Buyer name. So now all of my transactions are sorted by buyer name. And now if you wanted to create a different look, you could click this icon here, which would set up the view a little bit differently. So if you'd like to look at it this way, you can change it. So if you wanted to go back to the one-liner, then you can do that by clicking that button. If you ever find that you need help, maybe something's not working correctly, or you're not sure how to do something and I, I haven't covered it or something, uh, you can go to the help and uh, email the help desk, which I haven't done this before. I usually call them, uh, but you could theoretically email them and then, but then you'd have to wait for them to call you back. Uh, a lot of times when I have troubles with zip forms, I need an answer right away. So I do have a 1 800 number that you can use. Uh, let's see, zip form assistance. 1-866-693-6767. You might have to wait a little bit on the phone, but uh, definitely this is the better way to go. Perhaps you'll get an email back right away, but um, I would feel that you would get much faster service if you call the 1-800 number. And uh, obviously you wouldn't send that, but <laughs> you put your message in here of whatever it is that you're looking for. You have some subject matters here that you can choose from, and then you would just hit the send button and uh, hopefully get an answer right away. Okay, so thank you and this concludes the tutorial for zip forms.